In the last video for section 2, we're going to look at energy from fuels. The first thing we have to do is to work out balanced equations for the combustion reactions. And here we're talking about the combustion of hydrocarbons or alcohols. So, the equation is going to be for the complete combustion. And when you get the complete combustion of a hydrocarbon or an alcohol, all the carbon turns to carbon dioxide, all the hydrogens turn to water. So here's an unbalanced equation for the combustion of pentane. So balancing these equations is a technique you can use. First thing you do is determine how many CO2s get produced. Second thing you do is determine how many waters get produced and the third thing you do is determine how many oxygens are required. So first, balance the carbons. We've got C5 so we need to produce 5 moles of carbon dioxide. We've got 12 hydrogens so we need 6 moles of water. And then the trickier part is getting the oxygens balanced. So you need to look at the total number of oxygens you have on this side. On five CO2s you've got 10, and in six waters you've got six. So you've got 16 in total. So we need eight moles of oxygen. And then that's your balanced equation for the combustion, for the complete combustion of pentane. If you had incomplete combustion, of course, you also get carbon monoxide and soot, just unburnt carbon produced, but you won't be asked to balance an equation for incomplete combustion. Okay, we use a very similar technique for uh, burning alcohols. Just need to be aware that you have an oxygen in the alcohol. So first thing we do is balance the CO2s. Got two carbons over there, so we need two CO2s. Hydrogens, well, note we've got the five there and the H and the OH, so we've got six hydrogens, so that means we've got three H2Os. So check how many oxygens we've got over here. Two CO2s, we've got four. Three H2Os, we've got three, so we've got seven. However, remember we've got the one oxygen in the alcohol, so we only need another six oxygens from the O2. So we only need three O2s. So that's how you balance uh, equations for the complete combustion of hydrocarbons and alcohols. Now, obviously, because of fuels, these reactions are exothermic. And the next thing we're going to look at how to measure the amount of energy given out by these fuels. So you may remember doing an experiment in class using equipment that looked a bit like this. So the fuel is in this spirit burner and in order to determine the energy output we measure the temperature rise in a known volume of water. We then use the equation EH equals CM delta T, where EH stands for the heat energy given out and is measured in kilojoules. C is the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram per degree centigrade. And both this equation and this value are given in your data book. M is the mass of water, which is in kilograms. And normally, not always, but normally the water we give them to you as a volume, usually in cubic centimetres. So to convert cubic centimetres into kilograms, we divide by a thousand. Because one litre of water weighs one kilogram. So if I've got 500 cubic centimetres of water, we'll have half a kilogram of water. And delta T is just the temperature change. And of course, these are all exothermic reactions, so it will actually be a temperature rise. Okay, so here's the example of a very straightforward question. So we're burning methanol, so 
so when one gram of methyl was combusted, it raised the temperature of 200 cubic centimetres of water from 25 to a maximum temperature of 40. Calculate the energy given out. So we look up our data booklet. See that equation? C we get from the data booklet is 4.18. M, now this is a bit where you can go wrong. Remember, M refers to the mass of the water we're heating up. It's not the mass of the alcohol we're burning. So the mass of water, well the volume was 200 cubic centimetres, so divide by a thousand gives us our mass of 0.2 kilograms. And our temperature rise was 15 degrees, we went from 25 to 40. And that comes out at 12.5 and the units are kilojoules, small k, capital J. So one gram of the methanol gave out 12.5 kilojoules of heat energy. Now, if we compare our results to the literature values, we tend to find that the experimental results using this apparatus are lower than the actual values. And that's because two main problems. Firstly, with this apparatus, not all the heat produced by the fuel goes into the water. Some of it heats up the surrounding air, uh, heats up the copper can, which radiates heat to the environment. And also you get incomplete combustion and the bottom of the copper can gets very sooty. We don't have quite enough oxygen here uh, to have complete combustion. And you don't have complete combustion, you don't get all the energy out of the fuel. So for those two reasons, uh, experimentally determined values are usually less than uh, theoretical values. Okay, as of the 2018 exam, it suggests in the instructions from the SQA that you may also be asked to use this equation to work out C, M or delta T. Okay. You won't find any examples in past papers prior to 2018. So at the moment we're just kind of guessing what these questions might look like. So you have to, to rearrange this equation. So the subject is C, M or delta T. So if it was a specific heat capacity C, that's just EH divided by M delta T. Whereas if it was a mass you're asked to calculate, it's EH over C delta T. And if it's the temperature rise, delta T you're asked, it's EH over M C. So if it's any of these ones that you've been asked to determine, it's just EH divided by the other two quantities. So let's look at what a couple of questions might look like. Okay. So when one gram of methanol is combusted, 32 kilojoules of energy is released. How much would this raise the temperature of 250 cubic centimetres of water? So we're being asked to work out delta T, the temperature rise. So delta T equals EH over CM. It's important you recognise this figure in kilojoules is the heat energy given out. Kilojoules is a measure of energy. So we're given EH is 32. We're heating up water. So C, specific heat capacity of water, is 4.18. And it's 250 cubic centimetres divided by 1,000. So that's 0.25. So that comes to 30.6. It's a temperature rise, so it's in degrees C. Okay. Now it also says in the notes from the SQA is that you may be asked questions of which the substance you're heating up isn't water. Now if the substance you're heating up isn't water, then the value of C isn't 4.18. So let me give you an example. So the combustion of ethanol was used to keep up all the oil 
by 25 degrees C. So it's olive oil we're heating up, not water. So C is not going to be 4.18. If 260 kilojoules of heat was released, determine the mass of olive oil heated. And then they give you the specific heat capacity of olive oil. So it's M we've been asked to calculate, the mass. So it's just EH over the other two quantities, C delta T. EH energy, which is in kilojoules, so it is there, 260. Specific heat capacity of olive oil is 1.79. Delta T was 25. And that comes out at 5.81 kilograms. Okay. So that's what a question might look like when you're heating up something which isn't water. Okay, four things you should be able to do. Know what is meant by the term exothermic reaction. And of course the opposite is an endothermic reaction. Balance equations showing the complete combustion of hydrocarbons and alcohols. Carry out calculations using the equation EH equals CM delta T and be able to rearrange it if you're asked to calculate C, M or delta T. And you should be able to give reasons why experimentally determined EH values may be less than the two values.